In this episode of Redefine, we talk with food and travel photographer Penny De Los Santos. We chatted in New York City one evening and she shared with us how she makes hummus look sexy and how exploding your life can be a fantastic career move. And if you ever want to pack super, super lightly for the editorial assignment of your dreams, you're going to want to tune in to find out how. Special thanks to our sponsors Adorama, the photography people, and T1 Line, the voice and data solution experts. Welcome to Redefine, Penny De Los Santos. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I'm excited to be here. We are here at the Javits Center during Photo Plus, and Penny is the managing contributed senior associate <laughs> photographer. Just a photographer. For <laughs> Sever, and also work a great deal for National Geographic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you do for those magazines and the other magazines and things you do. Yes. Started mostly doing travel and then moved into food photography. Not necessarily <laughs> by default, but the way you do it. Because you can obviously just shoot food in one town and just go restaurant to restaurant. The way you do it is... It's more about food culture, but that's yes. because the magazine, one of the main magazines that I work for really focuses on that. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so it's always about place, it's always about people, it's yeah. always about a moment. So it's, it's not just about beautiful looking food and kind of making a nice food beauty image, but it's about sense of place and it's all the great rules of that, that contribute to really good photography. And I remember, <laughs> because we both spoke at Creative Live, mm -hmm. and I remember listening to you talking about the fact that, um, yes, it, this is my subject, but you didn't change your photojournalistic tendencies. Right in any way and, um, and and you're saying it's all about place and it's about but feeling a lot too mm -hmm. and how do you bring feeling to food well it's because you do <clears throat> thank you you do <laughs> well I think it's 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 the way you bring feeling to any any photographic situation it's just about uh, creating a mood well it depends I mean if it's an organic moment you can't really do that right if it's a moment a real authentic right. moment in a visual situation it's just happening and hopefully you're ready to get that but in food you create it by you know like you would in any studio setting, you, you block the light, you reflect the light, you filter Cre the light. Creating emotion. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think food in its best, in the best way that it's photographed does create, it evokes an emotion. Either you want to eat it or you want to make it or you want to go there and buy it and try it. But you want people to be inspired enough to go, yes, I want to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's, you know, that's hard to do if it's, hummus I mean hummus isn't really that pretty yeah but you, I want to eat the you, crap out of that hummus I'm gonna get down on that so what do you do you, you gotta like sex up the hummus I use yeah. that I use that you analogy do. all the you time do. But you, you do you gotta and what do you do and so those are challenges what's with the, food. what's the sexiest hummus you ever created <laughs> Jerusalem it was hot Hot hummus. The hummus was. Was it a particular flavor, or was it just pure chickpea? Just straight up hummus, and yep. it's kind of like hummus. The word, the actual word, means chickpea. So, so that. in this sense, they actually had whole chickpeas. Are we really talking about that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so we actually yeah. had whole chickpeas in the hummus. Yeah. And then they do like a nice layer of really golden olive oil. Yes. Which really just gave it a lot of kick. Yes. Highlights, which made it feel like grab me a pita right now because I'm gonna, yeah. Like anything, whether it's portraiture or children or anything, whatever yes. your subject is, you should have a passion for it. Yes. So, in you general. You have a passion for food. You're a foodie. Are you yeah, a foodie? I mean. Oh, are you not a foodie? No, I am. That term kind of, I don't know about that word. Why? Because I think, I, 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 what does that mean exactly? I, mean, uh, I, I think I, of a foodie as somebody who is a connoisseur of food and enjoys it immensely and makes activities and experiences built around their love of food. <laughs> well, I work with food a lot, and everybody I work with is really into food, so I guess I'm a foodie, but, but I generally have, I mean, have it, I mean, would you call me, like, I, I feel the same way about art, I feel the same way about architecture, I feel the same way about photography, I feel the same way about people. Why did you move to New York? That's a, it was a big move for you. Huge. huge. Why? Uh, for work, 100%. For the assignments? For the ability to have access to more assignments? What? For all of it. For the inspiration. Everybody I work for is out of New York. The potential to get huger, more substantial projects. Attaching my name to, to people that I really want to work with, it happens here. And I've had many editors tell me over the years, and I had a great life in Austin. I had a great house. Yeah, Austin. <clears throat> Wonderful community, yeah. but um, I did... I didn't get, you know, th there wasn't work there for me. So mm -hmm. I travel a lot, and it was just an opportunity to 
take out traveling to New York as much and living in New York, and that way I can go see an editor like every day if I need to. Were you scared? No, not at all. Not at all? I was more, it was stressful because I had to clear my house out. I had to rework my personal life entirely, and that was kind of intense and really stressful and emotional. Um, that was hard. That was, I mean, I'm, you know, I think anybody who does photography knows that there are some serious personal sacrifices that you make. So yeah. we were just talking about, you know, we both did Creative Live, and right. that experience really did kind of push me. Yes. Um, I don't know if it did that for you, but it did for me. Like, I realized yes. I was, I realized I was trying to, like, I was telling people, <clears throat> take risks and, you know, just, just, just do it. If you're not doing what you love, right. do it, yeah. you know? No. Why not? Why not try? And at least know you tried and fail trying and then, and then go back to, then go back to whatever it is what you were doing. But why not? You only live once, you know? And I, I know, I know everybody has their circumstance and they can't always make it happen, but why not? And then I got home and I was like... Wait a minute. I'm not done. I'm not done. Yeah. I'm not. Why am I not doing this? And I had someone that I highly respect in the industry uh, basically just corner me and say, what the hell are you doing where you're living? So where are you based? New York or San Francisco? And I was like, Austin. And she was like, what are you doing? You're wow. never going to get those projects. Yeah. And I was like, Arr! the record scratched. And I was like, she just called me out. And I've, I've been told that before. And we all wake up at different times, yeah, right? Yeah. And I heard it. I heard it. I was really raw from Creative Live, and I just heard it. And I was like, I think I got to do this. And Here, so here's the thing about teaching, and this is what I think <coughs> you're alluding to. When you are, um, if you, you hear yourself saying something that you truly believe, and you know is right for you, and you know is real, and you in that moment, or especially publicly, <coughs> it's like the idea of public admission, you in that moment can actually hear something that sounds like a slight disconnect. Hmm. It's, I think, that's a major um, push to change anything that's not completely aligned yeah. with what you believe because you've now declared it in quite a public way. Yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally do. I felt like, hey, I'm doing great work, but I could do better. I could do more. And yeah. why am I not? Right. Why am I not? Why not? So I basically came home, and I'm borrowing the term from a friend of mine, uh, so I exploded my life. I exploded my life, and I said, Let's just do it, you know? So, you came here, you exploded your life. Exploded my life, came here, and it's been amazing. It's been yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, I just got this really wonderful deal with the, um, the cooking channel. Which the I'm cooking really channel? excited about, yeah. <clears throat> okay, what is the deal? Well, they wanna feature my, uh, my food culture photography okay. on a regular basis, that's one. And then I just got this big studio gig with them. You get a call, it says, get on a plane, we need you in Guadalajara to photograph tacos. Right? Okay. Okay. And it's going to be for um, Taco Magazine. And you have to go within like 12 minutes, grab the lightest amount of gear you can, get on a plane and go. What is the lightest amount of gear that you go with? I'm going with my 5D Mark II, my 24-105 F4, uh, my two chargers for, and two batteries. Okay. And I'm bringing a polarizing filter. Yep. For food. And, and Reflections. Liquid food. Go on. <laughs> well, it's not, a, it's not, I mean, I'm, I've got to show a sense of place. I've got to make a portrait. It's going to, Guadalajara, the light is kind of hazy. A lot of industrial pollution there. So she said it's so much better than that. I did. Guadalajara. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and a camera bag. A, a donkey. A small profile donkey. And that's it. And, and some underwear. You go. <laughs> Just one pair, okay. only one, okay. and I'm gonna turn them inside out. It's light, it's yeah. light packing. I'm gonna, okay. and then I'm gonna, anyway. Yes, yes, but no additional lighting or that's that that that's that's you. That's your slim. That's kit. it. Oh, and I'll bring a small reflector. Okay, that'll be it. <clears throat> okay, um, so this is where small reflectors actually come in handy. They're awesome for the shooting you do. Yeah, I always wonder. You know, I have the little one. I'm like, what am I gonna do? You know. Even for the little baby heads, it's not really doing much. Well, no, it's great for food, but then also I can lose, I can use foil in a kitchen. There's always tin foil. There's yep. also always a, something white. Yes. There's also always something black for the most part. Right. Um, so I can get pretty thrifty. The reflector would be a luxury for sure. You are, are you always <laughs> shooting real food? Yeah, it's always real. Okay. And that's not always the case, right? With food photography. It's not for commercial for sure. Right. Uh, but it's. In my case, it's almost always real. I mean, in the studio, sometimes it'll be, there'll be some fudge room there. 
here and there for some things, but for the most part, technically speaking, at the end of every shoot, if you wanted to, you could eat it. Thanks to the great talk, Penny. You want to check out the second part of our conversation next time. Yeah, there's more. Until then, though, untether your scanner and go ahead and take it anywhere you want. The Wolverine Pass 200 is a totally portable handheld scanner that is small enough to carry in your purse or a man bag or pocket, whatever. Pop in a micro SD card, battery, and just scan on the fly. You can buy the Wolverine Pass 200 at Adorama.com.